Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Hope Harbor Zoo. Hope you guys are all having the most wonderful of wonderful days. Uh, so, we are going to jump right into this. We are making a lovely little Japanese macaque habitat, heavily inspired off of the Central Park Zoo Japanese macaque habitat. Uh, so, we recently got these guys in an event in ZSU. Uh, so, it was one of the cooler animals that you could get from a sign-up species. So if you guys, if, if in case you guys are signing up for ZSU, Japanese macaques are considered a sign-up species apparently, uh, so you could get them very easily. <laughs> um, so that's what we're building for today. So in case if you guys are not aware, ZSU is sort of like an online role-playing zoo community. Uh, it has its own bot, so it's all pretty much automated. And it's just really cool. It's it's kind of like franchise mode, but a lot more realistic and a lot more fun, I would say, uh, because you're actually trading with people who actually have names, uh, and you could actually see other people's exhibits and stuff like that. I just find it a lot more rewarding than franchise mode, because to me, franchise mode, it's just very simple. Um, it's just, you're selling to a faceless market. Meanwhile, let's just say, for example, I was trading away some of my animals to, let's just say, Mocha, one of the staff members, or even Tiger Drake, or Mappy, I believe I gave some stuff to recently. And it's like, you know your animals are going to a good home, and you could actually see what they're being built for. And it's a lot more realistic, too. So you're not like, making puppy mills of you know japanese macaques you're actually making a decent habitat for them that actually follows some of like logical uh kind of logic zoo logic <laughs> so in case of the japanese macaque habitat i showed off an in-progress picture and csu staff reached out to me and they were like they could escape that add some hot wire and you're good and it's just super awesome just to be able to kept be kept in line like that i don't know it's just super cool so as you can see we are working on an island so i have to manually move these macaques back to the center of the island obviously japanese macaques are animals that you know they tend to live in the water um as you guys are probably familiar they can use that hot spring enrichment that we got in the wetlands animal dlc but they really aren't typically swimmers. They wouldn't really swim to get from A to B. Uh, so usually moated and uh, water habitats are fine for these guys. However, just having that extra bit of protection, which you'll see me adding relatively soon. I don't really add it for a bit, but um, I do add hot wire. So in case if you guys are unaware, hot wire is oftentimes used in the zoo community as a way to deter animals from climbing off of rocks and out of their habitat. The next time you're at a zoo, be sure to look up uh, towards like the top of habitats and you might notice some hot wire. It's very thin. Uh, you can really only see it if you're looking for it. Uh, and it's just lightly electrified wire that would deter animals from actually climbing on it. Just really awesome, very standard in the zoo community and it doesn't really hurt animals. If it touches it, then it knows, okay, I don't touch it again. Like animals are smart like that, you know? So, you can see we're having a lot of fun with rock work. I'm not really used to doing any rock work like this. It's not really a rock work that I would do in Hope Harbor Zoo. Uh, but it's just something I really want to experiment with and have a little bit more fun. You can see I changed the color of the water. I went for a little bit more of a murkier green. Because this would typically be water. I wouldn't call it dirty, but I wouldn't call it necessarily clear. Uh, and making it a little bit more murky like that gives it the effect that it's a lot deeper. But for the sakes of, you know, working inside of the game logic, I really want it to be nice and shallow. Just in case if, like, you know, I wanted something to kind of peek out of the water or something like that. It really made sense if you remove the water. Uh, so that's kind of what we're working with over there. And I start to add a little bit of foliage throughout here now. Uh, I wanted to get the initial stuff done first, so I usually work in my building sprees kind of in um, in order, I guess, if that makes sense. Uh, so I start off with rock work, just to lay down the foundation of where I want stuff to go. Then I work my way up with different kinds of foliage, so I start with lower to the ground foliage and work my way up towards trees and larger items, kind of like along those lines. I get started over here on um, kind of like a dock where the keepers would be able to kind of take a little boat out towards. Uh, 
uh, not really a boat, but definitely something that they could climb down and get to the habitat with in case if they do need to clean it. I really didn't look too much at Central Park's kind of like holding area, but a lot of it is based around an island. I think it is entirely an island. I really need to look that stuff up because I'm super curious. In case if you guys have ever been to Central Park Zoo, let me know. Or if you guys have any information related to that, please let me know because I'm super curious. Now, as we are continuing the Islands of Color section, one of the things I always do love to do in terms of like zoo design in Planet Zoo is continue themes and kind of like um, just, yeah, just building themes inside of these areas. So you could see I took those same uh, kind of uh, fences. Yep, yeah, sorry, I'm like stumbling over my words today, but I took those same fences from the Australia section and I changed them out for glass and made them red. Uh, so ideally this would be kind of like the red quote unquote section of Island of Color. And if I ever do get like Sika deer or any other kind of Japanese animal, I'm not really sure what other kinds of Japanese animals I could get, but they would go in this little mini section, I guess, I guess red crown crane that honestly, yeah, that, that, that's actually an animal that I should be planning on getting relatively soon. So that actually works out pretty good. So they would kind of go in this little section over here with that red kind of continuing on. And that's one of the ways that I kind of identify sections in zoos is just how it's being like represented through color, being represented through architectural styles. So you could see that this section, uh, it has those big bamboo beams as supports for those glass fences. Uh, and it's the same kind of bamboo beams that you would see throughout the rest of Island of Color. Super awesome and super versatile just to be able to make your way through kind of like these sections, making use of the same themes and um, just making it feel very coherent altogether. I don't know. I really do like that. So working over here, just trying to figure out what I can do just for the guest perspective. And here's about where I was like, okay. I got the message from staff. I was like, okay, I've been a bad boy. <laughs> so I got to kind of retrofit this habitat a little bit more to better make sense in case if I were to get a macaque that escaped. And I was like, you know what? While I'm doing that, I'm just going to make their holding quote unquote building over here. And I kind of make do of that. Just very simple. Uh, I'm utilizing the general zoo pack bricks over there. I will hopefully work on getting Nick to release those soon. Uh, I think he wants to add a few more things to it before it's ready to ship out. But I think his latest additions to it are going to be pretty cool. Uh, it's going to have like a bathroom set and everything. That's mainly what's the hold up. Uh, but it's also going to have a bunch of other stuff too. I don't know. Keep your eyes peeled for it. Now working over here. I'm working on the actual holding building itself, so I really want this to function both for the Red Crown Crane, which really doesn't need indoor holding all too much, uh, since they are cold weather animals. Same with macaques, but macaques mostly have that indoor section mostly for the winter, be not for the winter, for the summer, because it would get kind of cold. Um, no, it would get kind of hot. Jeez, oh my gosh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm fumbling the bag right over here. Anyways, here's a hot wire, so... It's obviously pretty visible, and I think those uh, red lights on the end kind of help it a little bit. Just fall in line with the section a little bit more. But essentially, that, again, would be electrified wire that the macaques would touch, and they'd be like, okay, no escapee for me, because macaques are pretty crafty, crafty little buggers. Uh, and also doing a little bit of theming throughout here, nothing really intense, uh, because I don't want to go too crazy with, like, a whole Japanese theme because, I don't know, I feel like that would be a little bit tacky. I want to lean more into the natural side of it when it comes to the little Japanese section over here. Uh, Japanese mini section, I guess. So I have that working out over there. And I have this elevated viewing over here. Ideally, it would be kind of like a ramp. Uh, but I didn't really want to work with, you know, putting those um, gridded pieces on an axis because free build has been a little bit weird recently it's nothing that'll break your game absolutely not please don't think that it will but it's more so just weird kind of happenstances when it does come to placing items on that are usually on a grid non-gridded if that makes sense i don't really know but continuing that molding throughout the rest of this section or at least most of it uh, because i really didn't do all of it all too much uh, but I just thought I'd carry it that along 
just for a little bit. And of course that section in between Japan and Australia, I could probably throw something over there. I'm still figuring out what I would actually want to do with that uh, because that's my favorite part about Hope Harbor Zoo and that's my favorite part about um, just ZSU in general is the fact that it's all very versatile. It uh, It's just always changing. Plans change, species change, uh, holdings change, and it's just super awesome just to be able to be, okay, you know what? I'm not feeling this anymore. I am going to seek out other species for this section and I'll work with that. I don't know. I just really do like stuff like that. So I'm using this by, I believe that's Mr. Domez, if I'm correct. Very awesome creator from back in the day. He made that lovely little air conditioning unit. And I am just making sure that it feels, it, it, it passes the vibe check. And I honestly think it does. So that's pretty good right there. Uh, and I also add this little ladder over here. Again, I believe that's by Mr. Domez. I could be wrong though. Uh, please correct me in the comments down below if I am, because usually I am. But that's really it, my friends. I did a small little bit of building off camera, but I hope you guys are totally fine with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode nonetheless. I hope you guys are enjoying Hope Harbor nonetheless, because it's still one of my favorite series on the channel right now. And I hope you guys are just having a lot of fun with that. The response to the crane habitat has been very, very good. So get excited for another crane habitat when I actually do get those boys shipped over. But that's really it, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Always be sure to leave a comment down below just to help that handy dandy little algorithm. And that's really it. And have the most wonderful and wonderful days. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care and bye bye.